Hey guys, let's take a look at some more nonlinear systems, which means systems that are not lines, right? And we've done a ton of the ones before that were lines, like 2x plus 5y equals 12, and 8x minus 2y equals 17, and whatever. We graph two lines, wherever they, the, 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 you know, the, the two lines cross, that's the, you know, the point at which the x and the y work perfectly to solve for both equations. We've done ones before that you, you graphed and you went, yeah, you know, they, they meet somewhere in the middle. I can't possibly tell from that drawing where they meet. So again, you can either substitute, you can either you can eliminate, or you can graph. And any one of those three will work. And let's look at this one right here. So take a minute and copy that down. Um, you know, we can mess with this at first. Let's just let's mess with this for a second here and go, okay, I'm gonna take this top equation. That's negative y, I'm moving this over, negative 6x uh, plus 5 which means it is a, neg a y will equal positive 6x, and that will be minus 5. So that's simple enough to graph that, right? So this will be negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then my, gosh, that's a tech of a slope. Okay, that's 5, 6 up, and then 1 over, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up, and 1 over, and then this is steep line. Look at that slope of 6. So that's a bigger the slope, the steeper it is. Okay, there you go. Okay, now this one, you never, probably never graphed that in your entire life. You know, what the heck do you do? But don't forget, anytime you see some any kind of equation of any kind, then you go, ah, I don't know what it looks like. I have no idea. Well, just start plopping points in there. Do whatever you want, okay? And you can just randomly, I mean, you could probably deal with this pretty well. You could go, uh, you know, how about two times two is four? Hey, there's a point. Two and then two, that's one, okay? Oh, how about with this? If x is 1, then y is 4. If x is 1, then 1, 2, 3. Hey, there's 1. Okay. And then, oh, look, if x is 4, then y is 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and, you know, and then 1. And you can probably see what's going to happen here. If you did, let's say, 8. You know, if x is 8, that'd be a half, right? So 8 all the way over, and then right there. And then, of course, you could tell that it's going to happen over here as well. So you can see what's going to happen. It's going to look like this. And what's also weird is don't forget negative numbers, right? What if you had negative 2 here? Then you'd have negative 2 there, right? So negative 2 and then negative 2, and then you can, you can see what's going to happen here. So this is going to be like looking like this. That's a terrible drawing. Anyway, it's going to kind of curve. But the thing is you notice it never is going to hit 0 because you can't possibly stick something in there like 0 for x, then y equals you know, 0 times what gives you 4. It doesn't exist, so it's never going to touch there. But you can see right here is a point where they intersect. And also right here is a point that they intersect. So there are your two answers. What are they? Good luck. I'm going to look with a magnifying glass and find out exactly where that hits that right there. You know, you might as well try to you know, look at a you know, record with no label and try to guess what song it is or whatever. It's insane. So anyhow. So we cannot graph this and figure out, unless you're some kind of a magical genius, what the solution is. You also look at this, and you can't just, you know, you can't do elimination, right? Going up and down, oh, I'm going to eliminate one because this is an XY. That's not the same one as either of these. So obviously, we're going to have to substitute. So, um, you know, you can handle this however you want. You're just going to have to get X uh, by itself. You can do either way you want to do this. Let's just say we take this one down here. And we go, okay, if x is equal to, well, if xy is equal to 4, then x by itself is equal to 4 over y. Now, if you want to, you can put this up here, you know, like that, and go, if x is the same thing as 4 over y, well, let's try and see what happens, okay? x is equal to 4 divided by y. Well, let's put it there. 6 times 4 over y minus y equals 5. Okay? Well, let's figure it out here. 6 times 4 is 24. And that's going to be over y minus y equals 5. Okay? Well, we're trying to solve for y here. Well, we've got, a, we've got an equation here with a y in the, in the denominator, so we've got to have to multiply the entire thing by y, right? Yeesh. Okay? as if this is over one and this is over one, okay? So the first part, we're gonna, we got y's cancel, so we have 24. The second part, we have y squared. And the third part, uh, we have 5y, okay? Well, that's
that's a mess in it okay well let's do this um, let's try to you, you can we recognize that this is a quadratic equation I'm sure okay so let's take a look um, let's go let's make this uh, negative y squared we'll leave it for the second for a second here we'll move the 5y over becomes negative 5y we'll keep the 24 the way it is and we'll go equals 0 and if you want to don't forget you can divide the entire everything by negative 1 you know to make you know, to make this uh, lead coefficient here just a normal one so we got y squared here plus 5y minus 24 equals 0 I'll stop right there okay We've done nothing weird except for, okay, we went, we can't eliminate, we can't graph, we're going to have to substitute. I did a substitution down there, plopped it in that top equation, ended up with some horrific looking thing with this, but we went, okay, well, to clear that out, that gives us a quadratic equation. We're used to this stuff, right? You're used to this stuff by now. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now look at this. Look, this actually works out. And don't forget, you can always use the quadratic formula like negative b plus or minus blah blah but if you look at this for a second you go wait a minute i got two numbers that multiply to give me negative 24 and they add to give me five i got it and it's going to be y plus eight and that'll be y minus three that equals zero so i have the answer is negative eight and three those are my two y's and there we go okay all right I'm just going to erase this because I've got no, got no room here so far, so, or at least at this point. Okay. All right. If there's anybody in the audience who's really OCD, I'll just leave a couple of these little things out here for you to think about the entire time. Oh, I think I missed a few. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's good enough, I think, right? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, anyway. I'm just kidding. I'll get rid of them. Okay, here we go. Look at all that. Is that... Oh, is that, we, no, that's okay leaving there, right? Is that okay? Okay, I'll just leave it. All right. So picky, I guess. Okay, anyway. All right. When we got two Y's, we need two X's, right? So, I mean, probably the easiest one to pill with would be this one over here, right? So X times Y is four. You know, we'll just stick it in there. Let's try negative eight first, okay? So X times negative eight is four. In other words, negative eight X is four. So... X is going to be 4 divided by negative 8, or negative a half. There's one of your X values. The other one will go the same equation and just go, what, X is, uh, we said 3? No, Y is 3. Okay, so X times Y is 3. That equals 4. So 3X is 4, and then X is equal to 4 thirds, okay? So in other words, you know, once we graph those two, I should have kept that on there, but go go back and look, look at the... Uh, um, graph from before and plot these points. Ready? Here's a point. Ready? X is four thirds uh, if Y is equal to three, right? That's one point. And then others, it's going to be a little more than one and then up three. The other point will be if X is a negative a half, then Y is going to be negative eight. Okay. So that'll be negative a half and then right there. That's where they're going to intersect, which I think the old drawing showed that. So anyway, so Looks kind of complicated, but just, you, you, you know you're going to have to, when you look at these, you know, you know substitution. Substitution is going to have to be it. Every, every off chance, you might get one that, like, graphs perfectly, but that's a, that's a long shot. Don't waste your time graphing, just absolutely substitute. Okay, let's try another one. Here's another system, right? Pause it and copy if you need to. Okay, well, happily, look what you can do this time. You know, we're used to having to go, oh, we have to substitute because, you know, graphing, I can't tell what, where, where that point is or where they intersect. And now I sure can't go up and down and eliminate. Well, guess what? You can eliminate on this one. Look at that. Those are all like terms. So you can just go, the heck with this. No more substitution. Yoink. I'm just going to add straight up and down. So 1x squared plus 2x squared is 3x squared. 9 plus negative 6 is 3. Then y squared plus negative y squared, gone. Okay, we divide by three, which means we get x squared is equal to one. So remember, if we introduce this, we go x is equal to plus or minus the square root of one, which is just one. So there are our two x answers. That was simple, okay? Easiest thing to do, probably, I mean, you tell me, which one of these would you choose to plop the x back into, the top or the bottom? 
I do the top, of course. Yeah, you crazy. And you have not to do that. Uh, so we have x squared uh, plus y squared is equal to 9. Okay, so in other words, 1 plus y squared is equal to 9. So y squared is equal to, oh, I just did that accidentally, y squared is equal to 8. So y squared is equal to the square root of 8. And don't forget the square root of 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. The 4 comes out and becomes a 2, and there's your square root of 2, and there you go. And again, if you were to draw these, in fact, you can go, there are graphing websites online, and you can, you know, just for giggles, you know, type these two in the, on the same coordinate plane and see where they intersect. And you'll see one of the x's values will be positive 1, and the other one will be negative 1. And you'll see the two, uh, uh, these, this is a circle, the first one is. Anyway, well, I'll, I'll let you do that, but that's how it works. So anyway, all right, well, let's try two practice problems, and we'll call it a day. Uh, Try A and then just give it a give it a pause there. Okay. Um, again, we're going to go back and do the same old method here. We're going to go, and you could try. You could say x is equal to seven divided by y, or you could say y is equal to seven divided by x. Whatever you want, doesn't matter. I'll just do the x. What the heck? Okay. So x is equal to seven divided by y. Okay. And I'll take this one, and I'm just going to bring it right here. So 3 times x, I'm not going to write x, I'll write 7 over y. Minus y equals 4. Okay, so I got 21 over y, right? Minus 3y equals 4. There you go. Okay, well we've got a y, that rotten y in the denominator, so we're going to have to multiply the entire thing by y over here. So here we go. That's going to be 21. This is going to be minus 3y squared. This is going to be 4y. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's just make this into the normal form of a quadratic equation. Let's go negative 3y first. Uh, let's go, let's see here. We'll move the negative over the 4 over here. There you go. And then um, the 21 stays the same. And that's going to equal 0. Let me make sure I got that right. That's going to be 21 minus 3y squared equals 4y. Okay, so negative 3y squared minus 4y plus 21. Okay, and again, you can change the value of, in other words, you're dividing everything by negative 1 on this side and by that side. 0 divided by negative 1 doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and just make this into some, something a little more simpler. 3y squared uh, plus 4y minus 21 equals 0. Okay, this is where we go. Okay, uh, we're going to have to figure this out and use the quadratic formula for this one. So there's nothing that we can tell at this point that we can factor this out by. So well, let's go ahead and use old faithful here. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, so negative b is negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared 16 minus 4 times a Good gravy. Times C, negative 21. Good heavens above. Okay. All right. This is going to be very nice for us. And over 2A, that's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay. Let's look at this all in one hunk. All right. There's 16 there we know. We got negative 4 times 3 times 21. Okay. Well, negative 4. Uh, good gravy. Let me check this out real quick. Hang on one second. <laughs> All right, this is turning out to be a weird one, but let's take a look here. Gosh, this is a complicated looking answer, but hang in there. Uh, we got negative four. We got plus or minus. We got 16, and here we go. We got 16, it's gonna be minus, well, let's just hold off on that for a second. Negative four times three is negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 21 is positive 252. So good heavens above, we got 16 plus 252, that's going to be 268. I doubt if any of us know this off the top of our head. But if you factor this thing out, it's going to be negative 4 plus or minus 4 times 67, which you would get if you used a factor tree. This seems like a really complicated one to get put you guys. Anyhow, that's, that's, a, that's a times, not a dot there. Uh, this is over, still over 6. This comes out, the square root of 4 is 2. So we have negative 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 67 over 6. 
And since this, this, and this are all divisible by 2, you're going to say negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 67 <laughs> over 3. Golly, what a horrific answer. Anyhow, okay. All right. Then we're going to have to figure out what y is. All right. The way we figure out what y is, is to substitute this in where x is, which is a complete nightmare. Okay. And we'll hang on to this one and just go to the actual example in your book. This will be a lot less complicated, I think. Let's go to B. And uh, this is an easier one because we can just go ahead and add down and use elimination. And uh, go ahead and pause it and try B. Okay, if we add down, this is what we get. We get 4x squared. That adds away. And this equals 8. We divide by 4, we get x squared is equal to 2. Okay, well then x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. And there is our two answers for x. All right. And again, you probably see that the easier one to substitute back into is the top one. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have here uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 10. Well, no matter which one this is going to be, this the answer will be 2. So x squared will be 2. Plus y squared is equal to 10. All right, so y squared is equal to 10 minus 2, and I'll be doggone at the exact same thing with a little bit of a change here. The square root of 8, remember, is the square root of 4 times 2. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 2 is like, just like this. So these are your two answers, which means you have two points. There's an x, and there's a y. There's the other x, there's the other y. Okay, all right, see you guys next time.